YouTube, how you doing today? Today's video is going to look at probably the most fun build in Elden Ring that you can possibly play, at least in my opinion. Now I haven't been around to upload a video for a while and I will have a dedicated portion of this video to my personal life updates and as to why you haven't seen me on this platform for quite some time. This build can sport everything from colossal weapons to daggers, even at power stancing, and has lots of good incantations, it does good damage, and it holds up against bosses. Check out this fight with Commander Niao to start things off. So this portion of the video is going to focus on my personal life updates and why you haven't seen me on YouTube for quite some time. If you are not interested in this portion of the video, that is completely fine. I've left it as a chapter down below so that you could skip ahead very easily. Don't worry, you won't miss any information about the build, the only thing that you will miss is the background gameplay of me using the build against various bosses. So starting out with the first thing that has kept me off YouTube, I need to give you some background. I was living in Southeast Asia as a volunteer with my fiance, who is not a US citizen. When my father unfortunately passed away recently, I needed to move back to the States in a hurry. This was a huge problem because my fiance was unable to travel with me. We had to do a lot of paperwork and it took many years to actually get her here back with me. I can now happily say that she is living here with me and we are happily married. The second thing that made things difficult was that we actually adopted a homeless dog when we were living in Thailand. If you didn't know this, many dogs in Thailand are actually in fact homeless. It's not uncommon to be walking down the street in a village and see a pack of six or seven wild dogs 
that are just walking with no owners in sight. Specifically, our dog, Teddy, was sleeping on the ground at our resort in the parking lot. We started to feed him, we let him inside, and we full-blown adopted him while living abroad. This became an issue as there was a global ban in place for importing dogs to the US based on the risk of rabies. That means that my wife and I had to receive a permit in order to get our dog back home with us. We parked him in a doggy daycare center for months and months after she arrived to the US. Keep in mind that I hadn't seen my dog in years. Finally, things had worked out and we were able to bring Teddy to the United States. And if you were wondering, after four whole years of not seeing each other, he did remember me. And he let the whole airport know it as well. So as you can see, some of these updates are incredibly positive. These are great things that have come together in my life and have benefited me. Unfortunately, there was also some bad. Just a while ago, I was playing Elden Ring, trying to prepare for this video, and all of a sudden my computer just poof, shut off. All of my monitors went blank, and my PC would not even post on the motherboard. Come to find out, it was my 3090 graphics card, which if you don't know the price of the 3090, it's not an easy thing to just go out and replace. Not to mention that it's extremely out of stock pretty much everywhere. So this was a huge problem for me. Luckily, NZXT who built my computer was incredibly straightforward they were incredibly fair, they accepted my RMA, and they also sent me a replacement when they found that the graphics card was in fact defective. This was great for me, and I can't thank them enough. All right, so getting back to the build. This build does amazing in hand-to-hand -hand combat. You honestly never need to touch any spells or projectiles if you like that style of brawling out. Check out this fight with the gargoyles and see what you think.
even though this build is great at the most basic level, it's able to brawl out in hand-to-hand -hand combat with even the hardest bosses in the game. Some people don't like playing that way though, and that's totally fine. While I don't condone just sitting back and throwing spells the entire fight, it is totally possible with this build. Graceless, tarnished. What is thy business with these thrones? Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies, Mikola and Melania. General Radan. Fighter Icard. Luna Princess Rani. Willful traitors. All. Thy kind are all of a piece. Pillagers emboldened by the flame of ambition.
so one thing to understand is that Elden Ring was my very first Dark Souls game. In the beginning, and early on through my playthrough, I had a really hard time getting baited by the boss's attacks. If you're new to Elden Ring, you'll know what I mean. Attacks seem very slow and delayed, and they cause you to dodge early and still get hit. With Bloodhound Step in your arsenal, this keeps you incredibly mobile and allows you to dodge multiple times through attacks to stay safe. You'll notice that when fighting Radon here, my build is holding up very well. Even though, as you can probably tell, I'm still not very good at the game and I don't have the experience to play through it very smoothly. Before we begin, allow me to paint you the full picture. General Radan is cursed ever to wander. Side by Melania's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. Now he gathers the corpses of four friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog. Howling at the sky.
Here at Melenia, Blade of Mikola, I'm going to show you how you can actually use incantations in a clever way in order to do nice combos and do big damage. This, in my opinion, is much more fun than just some random one-shot build. I hope you enjoy this, and I'll see you afterwards. I dreamt for so long. My flesh was dull gold, and my blood rotted. Corpse after corpse left in my wake. As I awaited his return. Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat.
mark of a true lord. Oh, dear Mikola. Oh, dearest Mikola. My brother. I'm sorry. I finally met my match. This final portion of the video is going to focus exclusively on the build. So let's start with who this build is for. If you were looking for a build that can just one-shot a boss, that trivializes content with some crazy fingerprint shield, unfortunately you're in the wrong spot. This build is kind of the opposite. This will bring you toe to toe with the bosses in the game and make every fight feel meaningful. You'll be brawling out in one versus one combat with the various bosses. Well, hey, maybe sometimes one versus two and it's going to be engaging. It's going to be a lot of fun. This build is also for people who like to switch up their play style. So if you want to use colossal swords, power stancing against one boss and go in as an assassin with daggers on another, this build is perfect for you. This build also has a number of incantations. In addition to being good at fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you also have plenty of spells at your disposal. There are a few characteristics of this build that are very important and help make it shine. So first of all, we have 60 poise. This is gonna allow us to poise through a lot of the regular attacks from enemies and not having us constantly being thrown off guard. This build is super mobile with Bloodhound Step. Not only can you fly around the battlefield or Bloodhound Step your way past any kind of attack, you can also dodge attacks a lot better. This will stop you from getting roll caught and will make the game feel a lot more responsive, at least in my opinion. We're gonna have enough strength or dexterity for whatever weapons you wanna use, even at power stancing. You're gonna wanna set your endurance to the very tip top point of the medium load. The rest of the points will be spread elsewhere into the build. This will depend on the weapons that you choose and whether or not you copy my armor for the 60 poise value. This is important because at heavy load state, even though you can use Bloodhound Step, your stamina regen is heavily impacted. This will become very obvious to you, especially if you are power stancing weapons. This build also sports AD Faith, especially when it matters, like during boss battles, and it maintains 40 to 60 vigor depending on how you want your health bar to be. I am going to show you the stat setup for power stancing colossal swords. This is because power stancing these weapons that relate to our scaling options as the heaviest weight requirement of all the different types of weapons in the game. If you are using lighter weapons, you can actually take those points that we spent into strength and endurance in order to use these colossal swords and you can allocate them into other stats. I would recommend putting them into either vigor, mind, or dexterity. As vigor is gonna increase your health pool, mind is gonna let you cast more incantations and dodge more often without running out of FP and dexterity will help you get your incantations off much quicker. For armor, basically this was a very difficult piece of the build to bring together. You want your pieces to add up to 60 poise without adding too much weight 
that will cause you to have to invest more points into endurance. Also important is fashion. At least in my opinion, I don't want to be walking around looking like a total goon. So for this reason, I've chose these armor pieces and I think they look great. Starting off in the weapon category, we are going to be using the Erd Tree Seal. This is because we have 80 faith when we pop our wondrous physic. The Erd Tree Seal has the best scaling at higher faith values. For your weapons, you will always want to have Bloodhound Step in your main hand. You either want to use Flame Art or Sacred Scaling. One good skill to use is the Flame of the Red Mains. I find this is nice to put in my offhand. Choosing between Flame Art or Sacred Scaling will depend on the boss's native resistances. Choose something that they are weaker to. Just like the other categories of this build, the talismans have a lot of versatility. You can swap out the Erd Tree's Favor or the Great Jar's Arsenal if you are using lighter weapons. Just remember to stay with a medium load. Radagon Sorceal is great for reaching stat goals. Flock's Canvas Talisman is awesome, but there are a lot of good options here. So if you want to boost your damage in other ways, or maybe boost your defenses, that's totally fine. It'll work out just as well as this for you. For the Wondrous Physic, we are using the Dexterity Knot and the Faith Knot. The reason I like to use these two is Dexterity is going to give us faster casting time and also we will have 80 faith for the first three minutes of any fight. I like to go in and use a lot of spells right away and then brawl out with the boss. This is what your stats will look like before you buff up. This is what your stats will look like after using Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and drinking your wondrous physic. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something new. Please enjoy this build, have fun with this build, and take your time through Elden Ring. It's an excellent game. Don't rush through it. Make sure that you just enjoy yourself, take your time off, sit in that gaming chair, and go ham. Take care, everyone and have yourself a wonderful day.